Today we're looking at section 5.5 and it's all about solving trig equations. Let's take a look at the first example for a minute just to see what we're trying to do here. You can see that we now have an equation because there's an equal sign and we're trying to solve for x. Now notice that x is an angle because it's the sine of x. So the goal here is to solve for an angle. Now, just like we normally do when solving equations, we're going to get the x's on one side and everything else on the other. The only difference is that our x's are going to be attached to the sign. We'll take care of the sign part at the very end, but we can't just get rid of the sign. We've got to keep the sign attached to the x. So let's just go ahead and try to solve this first equation. Let's try to get those x's on one side and the numbers on the other. I'm going to start by subtracting 3 sine x's from both sides. If I do that, on the left I have negative 2, and on the right I have 2 sine x minus 1. Remember our goal to get sine x alone, so I'm going to add 1 to both sides. Negative 1 equals 2 sine x. And we're close to our goal, we just have to divide both sides by 2, and I get negative 1 half equals the sine of x. So now, I'm trying to solve for x. I want to know what angle has a sine value of negative 1 half. Let's go over here to our unit circle and take a look. As I go around the unit circle to see where sine, the y value, is negative 1 half, I get two solutions. I get 1 at 7 pi over 6, and the other at 11 pi over 6. But the thing is, is there's actually an infinite number of solutions, because from 7 pi over 6, I can go 2 pi around the circle and get the same answer again. So to the 7 pi over 6, I could add 2 pi to it and get an answer that works as well. I could add another 2 pi, and another 2 pi, and another 2 pi. So I'm going to say 2 pi n, where n is an integer. And remember, that just means I can go around and around and around the circle as many times as I want, and I get the same answer. The same is going to be true for the other solution, 11 pi over 6. So you can see we're going to have many, many, many answers that are going to work, and that's the way we'll represent it. Let's go ahead and look at another example. Now, you'll notice in this example, we're told we want to solve this equation, and then we're told from 0 to 2 pi. So really, we're giving a limit here to the answers I want. I just want one circle worth of answers, so I don't have to worry about going around and around and around when I'm finding the answers. We're just going to deal with one circle of answers. Now, I have sine of x over 2 equals root 3 over 2. The nice thing is that I already have sine of x alone. The problem is that it's not sine of x, it's sine of x over 2. So what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and look and use a little bit of what we learned in the past called u substitution. We're going to replace the x over 2 with u. Let's just solve this equation. Sine of u equals root 3 over 2. So where does the sine equal root 3 over 2? And remember, now we're just focused on 0 to 2 pi. We don't have to worry about going around and around and around the circle. So if I look for where sine is root 3 over 2, I see an answer here, pi over 3, and another one up here, 2 pi over 3. So u has two answers, pi over 3 and 2 pi over 3. The problem is, is I don't want to know what u equals. I want to know what the sine of x, I want to know what x equals. So we're going to substitute back now. 
we're going to say, you know what, I wasn't looking for you, so I'm going to take these things and I'm going to put them in place of that and solve. So I'm going to say pi over 3 equals x over 2 and 2 pi over 3 equals x over 2. And I'm going to solve those two equations. If I solve the first one, I get 2 pi equals 3x when I cross multiply. So x is 2 pi over 3. If I solve the other one, I'm going to get 3x equals 4 pi divide by 3 and x equals 4 pi over 3. So there are my two solutions for what x equals. Let's take a look at another example. Here's the next one. 2 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1 equals 0. Now we're dealing with cosine squareds and cosines. Again, we're only looking at one time around the circle. To me, this whole thing looks a lot like a quadratic. Let's use u substitution again to make this look a little bit easier. Let's let u equal this time the whole cosine of x. If I do that, I have 2u squared plus u minus 1 equals 0. And I want to solve this equation. Let's go ahead and try to factor this. I'm looking for two things that multiply to negative 2 and add to positive 1. So I get 2 and negative 1. I use the rectangle here, 2u squared, negative 1. So I'm going to split this up to 2u and negative u. And when I find my outsides, so let's see, 2u and u, plus 1, minus 1. My factors were u plus 1. And 2u minus 1. The zero product property tells us to set each of those equal to zero and solve. So I get negative one and one half. If you remember though, I don't want to know what u equals. I want to know what x equals. So now I'm going to take these solutions for u and I'm going to substitute them back in up here. So now I'm going to say, when does the cosine of x equal negative 1 and 1 half? Remember, once again, we're only worried about 0 to 2 pi for this question. We're talking about cosine, so now we're thinking about x values. So if I look, I get one x value over here to be pi. There's one solution. And that's it for x equaling negative 1. Now I need to look for when x equals 1 half for the other equation. And I see one here, and I see another one down here. So we get two more answers of pi over 3 and 5 pi over 3. So this trig equation that we solved with a little bit of factoring actually had three solutions. Let's take a look at one more example, and then I'm going to give you one to try on your own for tomorrow. We have 4 sine squared minus uh, 4 sine squared x minus 1 equals 0, and again from 0 to 2 pi. And let's take that sine squared and let's let it equal to u again. Let's let u equal sine of x this time. If I do that, I have 4u squared minus 1 equals 0. And now I have a quadratic just like before. I want to go ahead and factor this quadratic. 
So I remember this is the difference of two perfect squares, and this one factors to 2u plus 1 times 2u minus 1. You also could solve this equation by adding 1 to both sides. So you have 4u squared equals 1, dividing by 4, and then taking the square root. Just remember when you take the square root, you get two solutions. So you get plus or minus 1 half. When I solve each of these over here, I also get my plus or minus 1 half. Now those are what u equals, but we want to substitute back in now to find the sine of x. I want to know what x equals, so I'm going to say the sine of x equals 1 half, and the sine of x equals negative 1 half. So we're going to go through first and see where does sine equal positive 1 half. And sine equals positive one half at pi over six and at five pi over six. It equals negative one half at seven pi over six and eleven pi over six. So it looks like we're gonna have four solutions here. Pi over six, five pi over six. 7 pi over 6, and 11 pi over 6. All right, before you come to class tomorrow, I really want you to give one or two of these a try. So I'm going to give you two examples that I want you to try, and use the ones you just learned to help you along the way. The first example that I want you to try on your own Is this one. Notice in that case I'm not limiting the answers I want. The second one I want you to solve sine of x over 2 equals root 3 over 2. And for this one I want you to solve from 0 to 2 pi. So go ahead and use those examples that you just wrote down to help you, and we'll go over these the next time I see you in class.